Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today, oh boy, oh boy, do I have a lot of stuff to go over. Starting with the fact that Intel just axed their A770 GPU. Nvidia and AMD are hurting. Nvidia's next GPU gets its first benchmarks. Is AMD holding games back? And your AMD GPU is about to get a lot better. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, as you can see, Intel has officially axed their A770 GPU. As you can see down here, it says it's official. As of June 20th, the Intel made Arc A770 is done. Intel actually released a PCN or product change notification for the card. And the main difference here is that it's been discontinued. Now, with that said, as you can see in this update, Intel confirmed that it's only discontinuing the Intel branded limited edition card and that they're still gonna be producing silicon for AIBs meaning it's only gonna be their first party cards that they're officially done with. Of course, this could just be the beginning and it means that later on they're gonna be axing the A770 in general, but let's not forget that the LE stands for limited edition. So this was always meant to be a limited thing. It wasn't gonna be on sale forever, but of course, if you are interested in picking one of those up, I'd definitely go and grab one pretty soon. With that said, while speaking of grabbing a new GPU, let's just say AMD and Nvidia aren't doing all that great, and that's great news for us. The story comes from a new article from the European outlet Hardware.info, and as you can see down here, they actually compare prices of GPUs from May to June. And it's pretty wild just how different prices have become in one short month. As you can see right here, this is NVIDIA, and starting with the RTX 3050, going from May to June, prices dropped 10.2%. Then the 8GB 3060 dropped 9.6%, the 12GB 10.6%, 3060 Ti 11.1%. Once again, all of this is just in one month. If we actually compare it to MSRP, the numbers get even bigger. We're talking 16.4%, 15.9%, 20% for the 3060 Ti. Then moving down to the current gen, we still see at least some price drops. We're looking at the 4070 down 1.3%, 4070 Ti 1.6%. Now the 4080 and 4090 did go up slightly, but when compared to MSRP, they are still quite a bit lower. Now, some of these older cards did go up a little bit. The 3070 Ti, 0.7%, 3080.9%, 3080 Ti, 0.3%. So some cards are slightly going up, but the vast majority of them are going down. Basically, NVIDIA is having a tough time selling GPUs. And that actually doesn't change much when it comes to AMD. As you can see here, now there is a slight increase with the 6400, but 10.4% for the RX 6600, 9.9% .9 for the 6600 XT, 8% for the 6650 XT. Really, there are price drops pretty much across the board, and it doesn't stop at GPUs. As you can see here, and I'll get to more in just a second, actually, almost across AMD's entire Ryzen product stack, prices have dropped by quite a bit. We can first see the 8-core 16-thread 7700X, originally at $449, is now at $299. Then the 5800X3D, so this is their last gen, 8-core 16-thread part, down 32% from the original 449, to 30746. Now, obviously this is a last generation product, but it's still a great gaming CPU, and given it's on AMD's much cheaper AM4 platform, it's definitely a good gaming CPU when you're on a budget. Then we have the 7900, and this one actually comes with Jedi Survivor for free. It's down to $379. And then the 7900X3D, that's down from $599 to $535. It also comes with Jedi Survive. Then we have the 16-core 7950X. This is down almost 50 bucks from 571 to 523.76. Ultimately, as we've seen time and time again over the last few months, PC hardware sales are way down, and because of that, manufacturers are lowering price. And I'll actually have some of these deals down in the description below, so make sure to check those out. They are affiliate links, so they don't cost you anything more, but it helps the channel out.
And next up for today, there's a really interesting story that I want to get into that originally comes from WCCF Tech, and you can see it's titled, What's Up with the Missing NVIDIA DLSS Support and AMD Sponsored FSR Titles. And as you can see down here, basically really quickly, the premise of this is that NVIDIA had quite a bit of sponsored releases and of those releases, as you can see here, all except for Battlefield had both DLSS and FSR support. And they basically claim that Battlefield didn't have FSR 2 because it wasn't available at the time of launch. Then they contrast this with AMD, it says out of the 13 or so sponsored AAA titles, only three titles received support for DLSS. So basically what we're seeing is that a ton of games when Nvidia sponsors a game have both DLSS and FSR. On the other hand, when AMD sponsors a game, it tends to only have FSR. Then in AMD's response, they state this. First, they state to clarify, there are community sites that track the implementation of upscaling technologies, and these sites indicate that there are a number of games that support only DLSS currently. They then go on to state that Fidelity FX Super Resolution is an open source technology, supports a variety of GPU architectures, basically, they sort of gave a non-answer. What they said in response to, how come your sponsored games don't have DLSS? They basically state, well, NVIDIA has DLSS only games that, you know, there are a number of those games. But the point WCCF Tech is trying to make is that a lot of these games that are actually sponsored, meaning AMD pays some money, there's likely some kind of deal going on in the background, and AMD effectively pays or at least helps them implement certain things. It's basically sponsored by either AMD and NVIDIA. When AMD does it, there isn't a lot of DLSS, but when NVIDIA does it, there is. So AMD's response isn't, no, we don't stop them from doing that from having DLSS in the game, they're just like, well, there's a lot of games that have DLSS only. Although what we're talking about here is specifically games sponsored by either Nvidia or AMD. Then contrast that with Nvidia's statement and it says Nvidia does not and will not block, restrict, discourage, or hinder developers from implementing competitor technologies in any way. The issue though is the fact that it is a fairly small sample size. On AMD's side, we are literally talking about 13 AAA titles. And not only that, but there are, it says only three titles receive support for DLSS, but I'd also argue that's still three titles. So AMD still helped to sponsor them and allowed them to have DLSS. Basically, I'd argue at least for now, the sample size is simply too small to definitively say one way or the other, but it is definitely an interesting correlation. And next up, it looks like NVIDIA's next GPU, more specifically their mainstream GPU, the RTX 4060, has been tested in its first leaked benchmarks. As you can see down here, it originally came from bench leaks, and this is effectively one is a Vulkan score and one is OpenCL. With that said, basically in Vulkan, it scored 99,419 and in OpenCL, it scored 105,630. When we compare that to other GPUs, we can see that it is a bit faster than the 3060. We're looking at between 17 and 18% faster. So I will say that that definitely isn't all that impressive given we are talking a new generation, but I will at least say that it is slightly better than the 4060 Ti versus the 3060 Ti. From here, I did the math, I think it was something like 15% faster uh, in the Vulkan API, and yet the 4060 was like 17% faster, then this was right around 17% faster while the 4060 was 18% faster than the 3060. So basically the 4060 should be a better boost over the 3060 than the 4060 Ti is over the 3060 Ti. And if we actually look at the uh, performance specs that Nvidia gave us, this falls right in line with that. You can see that the 4060 Ti got a boost of 1.15 times versus the 3060 Ti, but the 4060 got 1.2 times versus the 3060. So the 4060 did get a fairly decent boost, and not only that, I will also say that the 4060 
is cheaper than the 3060, while the 4060 Ti is the same price as the 3060 Ti. So overall, the 4060 is at least somewhat looking like a better GPU to buy, but we'll obviously have to see how it compares to AMD 7600. And regardless, overall, given we're talking eight gigabytes of VRAM and some of the issues that can come with that, I'm not so sure I'd suggest buying it. Regardless, this is the performance. And lastly for today, we have a really interesting story that originally comes from a tweet by AMD's own CEO, Lisa Su. As you can see right here, in response to this tweet, Lisa Su states, Appreciate the work you and Tiny Corp are doing. We are committed to working with the community and improving our support. More to come on ROCM on at Radeon soon. Basically, for those who don't know, ROCM is AMD's sort of competition to NVIDIA's CUDA. Unfortunately, when it was originally released, they didn't support Windows, opting to strictly stick with Linux, and they didn't support any of their gaming GPUs. Luckily, a little while back, AMD did announce that, hey, they're bringing it to Windows, and that at least for three of their gaming GPUs, they were adding support for it. Now, the problem with that is the fact that those GPUs were the RX 6900 XT, 6600, and R9 Fury. And in fact, only the R9 Fury fully supported ROCM. So basically, it's a very big contrast from NVIDIA's CUDA, which is effectively supported across all of their GPUs. Well, according to this, it at least sounds like Lisa Su is in fact working and they're gonna have some kind of announcement soon, but they're working to bring ROCM to more Radeon GPUs, even potentially referencing their newest RDNA 3 GPUs. You can see right here, talking about the RDNA 3 assembler. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for NVIDIA's upcoming 4060, or are you more looking on the professional side, hoping that one day ROCM actually competes with CUDA? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe, and as always, have a great day.